Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here, NAB Show 2015. I am at the JBC booth, and I'm checking out some of their newest, latest cameras, uh, a lot of them offering 4K, and some of them offering some really, really interesting features that I haven't seen anywhere else. I'm here with Craig, and you have one of those cameras here. What are we looking at here? Well, Bart, this is the GY LS300. It is probably the world's first uh, MFT mount. Uh, Super 35 imager that's designed from the ground up as a professional camcorder. As if you could uh, just taking a look at it, as the uh, ergonomics as your traditional PD 150, your DVX 100, your HVX 200, but it provides the lensing, uh, open lensing capabilities of a Super 35 imager and an MFT mount. Yeah, that's fantastic that you have almost like an ENG body here, but you're, you're able to use the Micro Four Thirds lens mount system to put a variety of lenses all the way back to vintage lenses. You know, Micro Four Thirds, you can get a lot of lenses for that system. Um, but you were explaining to me earlier, one of the most interesting features about this camera is how you can handle all those different kinds of lenses. You want to tell me about that? Sure, Bart. So what we have on the, gla uh, on the camera right now is a Rockinon MFT mount, but it's a full Super 35 imager lens. So what it's doing is, if you look on here, this is actually set the setting where you can adjust the scanning of the imager of the camera. So right now it's scanning the full Super 35 uh, image. So it's using the full yes. sensor that's in there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a vintage 16 millimeter film lens that obviously when you put this on the first thing you're going to notice and so you're mounting that lens with uh, just uh, just an a, adapter a passive for, for that MF, lens to uh, yes it's a passive MTF third. PL to micro four thirds okay uh, mount and this is that 30 year old 16 millimeter film lens yeah and when you look at the image on the camera you'll see you see the circle you get heavy heavy vignetting heavy vignetting because you're it's a very tight circle yeah that you're getting or the tight uh, small tunnel light that you're coming through the glass yeah what we're able to do in high definition mode in this camera is actually adjust the way that the image is scanning so that it's capturing wow. that 16 millimeter. So you can scale down the portion of the sensor that you're actually utilizing and pulling data from so that it, that 30 year old 16 millimeter lens will now fill your entire frame. That's right. So I have it set at the standard setting for 16 millimeter, which is roughly 52. 52% of a Super 35 imager. What I can go do now is we have a setting where you can check to see if you are actually still vignetting on the corners. Oh, so it'll digitally check the corners for you and let you know if there's any vignetting. If you can't, so, yes. that's great. So it, it's, it's got a little vignetting on here. So what I'll do is I'll turn that off and I'll bring it down a touch come out of the menu, and now you're recording at the native field of view of the 16 millimeter glass. That's, that's amazing, and I know what we were talking about, the advantage of that is that, like you said, you have basically just a dumb adapter on there. You don't need something like a speed booster to, to make uh, everything match. You don't need a glass element in there, which could, which could, you know, uh, add some aberration into your image. You're just coming straight through that that lens, that vintage great looking lens, and you're able to just sample a smaller portion of the sensor to get the image. That's right. That That is a fantastic feature that I really haven't seen anywhere else. Um, but on top of that, what can you just let me know what are the uh, the options for recording formats in this camera? Sure, the uh, option for recording formats in the camera, uh, first and foremost, you record an SDHC card is relatively inexpensive, you could find it anywhere. Uh, at 4K, you're recording 150 megs. Okay. H.264. Uh, if you're trying to compute how many minutes you can record on a card, it's roughly a minute per gig. Okay. So, 
uh, and you need the uh, UHI one cars, so the high high speed cars. High speed car to keep up with the bit rate, right. yeah. And high definition, and, and you can record 24, 25, and 30p in 4K. In high definition, you could go all the way up to 60p. You can record 50 megs, 422. Okay. H.264. So you can get the broadcast standard 50 megabits, 422. Exactly. With this camera out of exactly. that. Exactly. You could also record uh, ABC HD. Okay. Standard definition in 8 megs. And also uh, 480 by 270 for mobile applications. Okay, yeah. Uh, the other thing that you can do as far as recording or, or video is concerned, the camera has a host USB. Oh. We have five cameras in the JVC lineup, two in 4K, three in, in our Pro HD line. They can stream live directly from the camera. Oh, wow. The cameras actually generate their own IP addresses. So as long as you're online and the camera's online, you'll be able to see what the camera's doing. And if you have the full auto capabilities of the lens, you'll be able to start, stop, zoom, focus, paint, and also add metadata to the files. And the files that you record, you can either stream it live, or you can actually FTP the files directly from the camera. Wow, so that gives you a lot of options for uh remotely operating the camera, or even if, if you were out doing ENG style work, sure. and the ability to use that FTP if you need to get your, your footage back right away, that's right. Uh, you know, to, to meet a deadline, sure. that's fantastic. It um, kind of puts a twist on reality television. Yeah, kind of you, could, you could have it almost instantly sure. right there. That's let fantastic. Me, uh, let me talk to you more about the, the communications on this camera. Okay, it's got yeah. HDMI 1.4, so it's 4K live out of the camera, HDSDI 3G, it, the uh, SDI, HDSDI is only for high definition. Yeah. But you'll be able to record externally onto like a, um, you know, a Tomos, okay. uh, Shogun, or the convergent design device. Now can you, can you record 4K on those from this? Yes. You can? And is that over the HDMI? That's through the HDMI. Over the HDMI. So you can do 4K coming out of External this. External recording. That's, that's a great monitoring. feature. Yes. So, and can you do that at the same time while recording like a, an HD internally as like a, a proxy or? Actually, you, you can record high, uh, 4K and high definition simultaneously. Oh, okay. That's fantastic. You can record, you could be shooting 4K um, giving a live output uh -huh. and recording simultaneously as well. That's great. That's great to be able to do that. Now, what is the price point on this and when is it going to be available? So it's available now. Okay. So you can get it today. The price point is $39.95. Okay, very competitive price for, for internal 4K. It's internal 4K, has the streaming capabilities, you know, all you need is a, this is a a Wi-Fi uh, dongle, if you have a hotspot, you can stream directly from your hotspot, whether if it's a, a phone or a jetpack, or you could take a Wi-Fi dongle, plug it directly into the camera, and stream straight from the camera. No external parts or boxes needed. That's great. It's got everything you would need just all in one. Well, it's, sure. a, it's a great little camera, it's a great little kit, and that, that feature to be able to select, a, select your sampling off of the sensor, like I said, is something I haven't seen anywhere sure. else, and I think it's fantastic. So, guys, there you go. Uh, that's one of the latest offerings from JVC. Uh, go ahead and check it out, and I'll have more coming uh, from the NAB floor.